Good morning. Today we are building a business that supports the life that I want to live. And I'm going to show you some behind the scenes of that. So yes, I'm really excited. I went to Target and got some poster paper. I have post-it notes and we're going to have a planning dance party <laughs> where I basically give brainstorm all my ideas, write it all down, look at the big picture and then go from there. But first we're going to eat because we're going to prioritize taking care of self first and then going on to the making the money part. So let's eat some breakfast. All right, so I got some spinach and some Beyond Meat sausage for my breakfast. I didn't want anything too heavy because I need energy. I don't want the itis. I need energy to create. So yeah, fueled by greens, fueled by things that are alive and hopefully the creativity is alive too. <laughs> All right, so belly is full and now I'm going to sit here for a second just kind of recollect myself. I gave out a lot of energy going to the store this morning, cooking. And so now I'm just going to take a second just to come back and center myself with myself. So I have on some, um, it's called Music for Plants on Spotify. I love that playlist. It's very calm and um, nourishing. And I'm just going to come back to myself and get in the zone to create and to have some fun. So yeah, so here we go. Da, 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 da. So the way that I'm doing this is my mom has a whiteboard in her room, so I'm going to be using that. And I'm going to start off with how I want my business to feel, like what I want it to have in it. And I'm using post-it notes, colorful post-it notes because they're my fave, to write out these ideas, write out what I, what I want to do in my business, what I want it to feel like, who I want it to inspire, how I want it to impact the world. Because ultimately... You know, even though this is a way to make money, I really do want to change people's lives or give people the opportunity to take the steps to change their own life, um, to yield to having their life changed in a better way. Um, and so that's what I'm going to start with. I'm going to start with the feeling I want my business to feel like or parts that I want to incorporate. Because in my business, I want to bring all of myself in there. I don't just want to like fracture some of myself off and, you know, this person here and that person here. No, I want it to feel organic and authentic and I want it to feel good and like I'm not having to betray myself for money you know what I mean so we're gonna start off with the feelings back to the music I'm putting on some music that feels fun like dancing well yeah <laughs> saying how I want my business to feel for myself and also others. So some things that I wrote down, um, creative, fun and exciting, like play, soul nourishing, like a hug, authentic and human. I don't want to feel robotic. I don't want to feel like I have to be on 100% of the time or pretend to be somebody else. I'm human. And so I want to bring human, that human feel to my business. Um, passionate and vulnerable, Clear and open, clarity, uh, but overall, I want it to feel like home, like belonging, like being seen and held and heard, and I want it to feel like a nourishing and tasty meal. That's what I want my business to feel like. So the next step, I'm actually going to write down some affirmations that, that'll be my guide for, you know, dreaming of this business because if I come to a point where I feel stuck or I feel like I'm second guessing what I'm doing, or I feel like what I'm doing isn't enough, or that sounds silly. I wanna have these affirmations up there to glance over at and remind myself to stay on track and to keep going. So that's the next step. Again, I try. 
All right, so a few affirmations I wrote down have included, you are enough, you are all that's required. Let me turn it around. All right, you are enough, you are all that's required. You have so much to offer to this world, be generous. It doesn't have to make sense. Trust your knowing, trust God. The, ro the world needs what you have. Trust your intuition, it's Holy Spirit. You are deserving of good things. You deserve to be paid for what you offer and create. You are generous, so you deserve generosity. There are no rules. Do what you want. Focus on serving. Focus on impact. There is no lack. There is only abundance. There is enough for you. There is enough money, people, space, resources, time, and energy. Trust. It is God who makes you successful. If it feels heavy, let it go. Flow. Trust. Don't overcomplicate it. Don't... Don't wear yourself out, y'all. I got bad hand running. <laughs> um, you've always done amazing things. You're capable of more. More is on the way. Have fun. It doesn't have to be hard to count. Joy is legitimate. Let me say something to this, right? Because I think the way that we think about work is that it has to be hard to count, that it has to be laborious and stressful and anxiety inducing, that we're only worthy of pay or good things if we work hard. But I don't think that work has to be hard. I think that we can redefine work. We can redefine what work looks like for us. Because really when people are like really talented and gifted in something like masons, right? People who build things, right? Woodworkers, whatever. They're in flow and they're really good at it. And though it might be, you know, hard work on the body, when they're doing what they love, it's easy for them. They flow. They're like doing their thing. They found their genius. And I think that the reason why work sometimes feels so hard to us is because we're out of alignment or doing something we really don't want to do, or making it more complicated than it has to be. So I think that even if there are hard parts to my business, I don't think that it has to inherently be hard. I think that joy can be legitimate, and joy is legitimate enough um, to seek in work. You know what I mean? So I'm trying to approach this entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial journey, or artistpreneurial journey, or whatever, whatever artist journey, um, you know, from joy and rest and um, trusting and not like anxiety and scarcity and desperation um, and, and exhaustion. Like I wanna feel fulfilled, but I don't want my fulfillment. I don't think I can feel fulfilled if I'm exhausted. And so I think that joy is the way. So yes, I believe that. All right, next. Okay, it says, you have all you need to get started today. Okay, Oop, can't see, today. I want to say something to that too. Um, procrastination is a trap. This idea that you have to be perfect to do something or that things have to be lined up perfectly or you have to have the whole picture before you start because I have an affirmation there. Like you don't have to have the whole roadmap to take the first step. You know what I mean? Like you don't have to have the whole map in front of you to start moving because I think a lot of us are looking for clarity. Oh, when I get clear on this thing, then I'll move. But I don't think that sometimes clarity comes from dreaming. It comes from action. Like clarity, you don't even necessarily know what you want until you get there. You know what I mean? Like you might have an idea of what you want, but until you start moving and working your way towards the goal, sometimes you don't know until it shows up. And sometimes you don't know what's available until it shows up. So you don't have to have the whole roadmap to get started. Um, but back to this affirmation, right? Like, what was it? You have all you need to get started today. You don't need another thing, another course. You don't need another call, book, right? Like you have the answers inside of you. And I think that we should seek... Um, Seek help if we're stuck or seek help from other people um, if we really are doing the work and, and we're not clear. But sometimes it's a good excuse, a noble excuse to procrastinate. And so only you know the difference. You know if you really need help or if you just need to pull the trigger on what you have already. And that's the thing. Like, I'm like, okay, oh when I get this thing, when I get this clarity, then I'll do X, Y, and Z. But it's like, what has God given you already in your hand, right? Shout out to Latoya Okia. I follow her on YouTube. She's amazing. But that's one thing that she's talked about. Um, she referenced Moses parting the sea. You know, we all know that story. They leave Egypt. He gets to the sea, the Red Sea. And he's like, God, what we do now? And God's like, what have I given you in your hand? And sometimes we're stuck in a position or in a place because we haven't used or exercise the things that God has already given us. And I know that I'm guilty of that. And I have been guilty of that. So I don't need another book. I don't need another webinar, another YouTube video, another call. I just need to get started with what I have or the ideas that I have. I might not have it all fleshed out, but I have an idea and be okay with like building and process, like co-creating with the people I'm working with, like letting them know, hey, I'm just getting started. So there might be some changes, but I still want to get started nonetheless to figure out what I like, what I don't like, what works, what doesn't work. 
but I'll never get there if I don't get started in the first place. Like I can be transparent in that. And that's what I want to bring that human aspect um, to my business to be able to say, you know what? I don't really know what I'm doing, but I'm here to figure it out. You know what I mean? Like I have intentions. I have, you know, uh, the goals and I'm willing to work through, you know, the fog of like not being clear or not being um, sure or being afraid with you, you know, because I don't have to pretend to be someone I'm not to be impactful. I don't have to pretend to be an expert when I'm not to be impactful. I don't. So yeah, so you have what you need. I promise you have what you need. All right, what else we have? It's okay to to not have all the answers. We just talked about that. Um, ways open when we move. Clarity comes from action. Small steps, one breath at a time, one step at a time. And it says, we're focusing on changing the world one person at a time, you know? And then flow, follow inspiration, trust intuition, trust the no, follow the yes. There are a lot of like business gurus and all this type of stuff that'll tell you, you have to do X, Y, and Z. You have to do it this way. And sometimes it just don't feel good to me. I don't want to do it. <laughs> and it doesn't mean that I am a bad business person. It just doesn't resonate. And for some people it works and for others it doesn't. But I think that we need to trust the no. Like we know when something doesn't feel good. It's like some sort of like opposition. And it's not because we're afraid. It's not because we're procrastinating. It's not because, you know, uh, we're trying to convince ourselves not to do something or to avoid growth. It's because it doesn't resonate. It's not who we are. So like I talked about before how some, you know, business people will say, oh yeah, create scarcity around your thing. We only have 10 spots left. No one good and well, you have a hundred. That doesn't resonate with me because I don't want to lie to make sales. You feel me? Like I don't want to be a liar. I want to be all of myself and who I am in this moment is enough. And so if that is true, but I don't have to do no manipulative tactics. I can just show up and be honest, like, yo, this is my offering. If you want to, you know, come with me through this, wonderful. If not, great, you know, um, because even people saying no to you, it's not a rejection. It's just you being clear on who your who your client or who your person is, who the community you want to serve. Like everybody's not going to resonate with what I have to offer. And that's OK. It doesn't mean that I shouldn't offer my thing. It just means that those people aren't for me. So, so now we're going to get into the next step, which is actually writing down the ideas that I have in my journal, um, journals scattered around here somewhere in my phone. I'm writing down the ideas that I have for things to include in my business. Um, I want to bring creativity and musicality, all the things to my business, all parts of me. I'm trying to figure out how to do that. And so I'm going to use more sticky notes um, to write down ideas. And so there are no rules for this. There are no restrictions, no limitations. Anything goes. We're not second guessing anything. We're not, you know, overcomplicating things. We're not trying to make it make sense. We're just going to allow it to be. And then later on, I'll come back and try to put it all together in a package and cut out the things that are extra, put the things in that are that I want to add to it and then move on from there. So no rules, no judgment, just free flowing. One thing I forgot to mention is that I'm writing down ideas that I've seen other people do, ideas that I've had um, and just throwing it up there like letting it just be and then judging it later, um, figuring out what resonates, what doesn't. Because these are just ideas, right? These are just post-its. These are, these are temporary. So there's no need to judge my ideas. There's no need to judge what I put up there, what I want. It doesn't even exist any yet. It exists here and here, but it doesn't exist any in the like literal sense. And so it's okay. I can dream big. I can do whatever I want on these post-it notes. There are no limitations and no rules. And I'm going to change my playlist now because I want to dance. All right, so I think we finished. That's a lot, <laughs> but let's just go over and check it out. All right, so this first is the, what I want it to feel like. This is affirmations. This is business stuff, right? But then I realized some of the stuff I wanna do is actually connected to my art. So this is art stuff. And then this is stuff that I do for free. <laughs> so th things I do already, right? Um, so yeah, so on this list, I have guided meditations, all these things of creating and sharing where this is more like co-creating and collaborating with other people and building a community with people. But the interesting thing is, oh, my breath, y'all, it's hot. <laughs> okay, so the amazing thing is, I think that even by putting the post-its up, I'm gaining clarity. So the things that are on the right side, so let me see if you can see, the things, that are in the blue, that's going to be a part of something that I call the garden. And the things that are in the, you know, kind of mint kind of color, it's going to be a part of the sunroom. So the whole point is the garden is all about planting seeds and creating a life um, 
creating a practice of loving yourself, of growing things and helping them bloom in your life. So whatever you want to focus on, prioritizing that month. Every month I'm hoping to have a theme and we're going to talk about it together, work together, right? So all the things in the garden are about working with people, like actually spending energy with them in one space for working together, right? And the sun room is more for the people who want to just kind of sit and take in the sunshine that I give, so to speak. So music, meditations, journaling, um, albums, CDs, all that type of stuff. I realize that my art is more for the people who just kind of want to sit in the art. And the garden is more for those who want to take a step further and like, oh, it's a nice garden out there, but maybe I can grow a garden in my own life. So th those are the two things I'm, I'm walking away here with. I feel a lot more clear. Um, I feel excited because I feel like I'm going to be able to incorporate all the things I want to incorporate in my business in there. Creativity, Black women, music, um, conversation, community, all that good stuff. So I think the first step is done, but now I have to figure out how I'm going to fashion it, how I'm going to, um, and it doesn't have to be figured out today, but how to, I might do it today because I have, I feel like I'm in the energy and the flow, but I need to figure out how I'm going to present this stuff, like how we're going to meet all that good stuff so that I can prepare for January. Cause in January, I'm going to launch the garden, which is the more interactive work. Um, and then in February, I'm going to relaunch, get unstuck and get started, which is, and sign up is going to be in January, but that's going to help people specifically like, Hey, this is what I want to grow. I want to take my idea from dream to do <laughs> so that I need to get all that together. And it's December 5th today. So I have a lot of time, but I don't want to spend the holidays doing work. I want to spend the holidays enjoying the holidays. So I think that's what I'm going to work on next. Let's actually get this thing down. Next step. All right. So now I'm at the part where I am designing my business. So now that I have all the ideas down, I have been taking notes from other people's businesses, um, the way that they structure them, figure out what feels good to me. And again, trust the no, and then trust the yes and lean into the yes. So I don't have to do everything that everybody else is doing, but I love that I'm able to see the different models that people have modeled so that I can decide what's for me and what's not. And again, also not focusing so much on the model right now, because I know that even if I, if I start it and I do something, I'm not locked in, I can always change it. And that's the thing about bringing humanity to my business is that people are going to understand that I'm human and things have to change if they have to change, you know? So here we go. All right. So now I'm going to group all of the things that could work together in one session or have the same idea. And maybe I can meld them together, right? Or maybe I can do both of them in one session um, so that I can downsize from this to maybe like 10 things that I could offer in my uh, garden. So yeah. So I'll sh show you all what I have on the other side. Yeah, of that work. All right, so I grouped together all the different things that kind of work together. And then I transferred it into my notebook. And when I get back from lunch, and I'm going to um, design my days and figure out what days I'm going to work on, all that type of stuff. I'm so excited. It took maybe a few hours to get this done and I've been putting this off for a long time which shows that sometimes it's us sometimes we're just procrastinating we just have to do the thing all right lunchtime all right so I ate some lunch and I just need to get outside get some fresh air ain't nothing like silence in nature so that's what we're doing right now and then we'll get back to work later <laughs> there's something healing about being in the woods getting quiet it's like magical my face will cold a little numb so it's not moving, but it's magical out here. I thought the girls were supposed to be gone already, but y'all still here and I don't know why. I don't know why they still here. What are they going on? <laughs> all right, we're on day two and today we're doing YouTube, email, all that stuff. So let's get it. All right, so I just finished the list for, where is it at? Right here. For my YouTube, I feel really good about it. And now I'm gonna move on to Patreon. 
Okay, so I told you how my word for 2023 is going to be trust. That starts with trusting myself too. Like that also includes, excuse me, trusting myself and trusting my intuition, trusting what I'm telling myself or what I feel around something. And something I feel kind of heavy is this idea of Patreon being something to support the work that I'm already doing instead of making this more work to do. So let's, let me just start here. So I love my patrons. My patrons are the best patrons in the world because a lot of them are just like, girl, I just want to support you in the work that you're doing. I love seeing what you're doing. But I felt this pressure in the beginning of creating my Patreon to make it into another job, like to, oh, if you, if you give me money, right? If you support me, then I need to give you extra stuff, more videos, more music. And that became overwhelming. That became exhausting and I didn't really have the capacity for it because of all the stuff that happened that I couldn't foresee to be honest um you know no one could foresee me catching COVID or my grandma passing or me mourning or you know us moving out like these kinds of things happen and um life happens and so I felt a lot of guilt and shame around not being able to keep up the promises that I made in my Patreon like yes I'm going to give you new songs every week and new meditations and all this other stuff and I still have intentions to do that maybe not every week but I think it's time to really um, listen to myself, listen to how I feel around it. And I think I'm going to make the leap in trusting, leaving my Patreon open for those who just want to support the work that I'm already doing, right? Because the way that they tell you to market Patreon is to, you know, give your patrons, you know, stuff that, you know, people on YouTube or people wherever they're consuming your art don't get. And I'm still going to show like the behind the scenes. I'm still going to give them meditations and stuff and have events and stuff that we can't really have on YouTube, like on Zoom and stuff like that. I still have that intention. But I think I'm going to alleviate some of the pressure um, and allow people to leave if they want, allow people to join if they want by saying, hey, if you want to become a patron of mine, it's to support the work that I'm already doing. And because you're supporting me, you also get some bonuses and extras here and there. You feel me? Um, because again, they tell you to market Patreon like, almost like another job. It's almost like, a, yeah, you're doing all this work for free for these platforms. You're putting out content. You're trying to be found. You're putting out the music. You're showing the process. And then you get to Patreon. And you feel like you have nothing left because you've given all your energy and time to these platforms. Um, and I don't want, I don't like that scarce feeling like, oh, if you want the good stuff, come to our Patreon, right? Like, I don't want people to feel like that. I, I want people to be like, I love her. I love what she's doing. I believe in her mission. Let me give her some money to support her. And also I get some goodies on the side, like some merch and all this other stuff, right? Like I don't want the energy to be like, oh, if you want the good stuff, <laughs> you know, come to my Patreon. Because one, everybody don't have it. But two, I don't want to create in a way that's honoring scarcity or listening to scarcity. Like, oh, you know, again, that trick, like, oh, Here's a little taste. And if you want the rest, come over here. I keep saying, oh, by the way, <laughs> if you, here's a little taste. If you want the rest, come over here. But I also don't want it. I don't want to have to trick people to do that. I don't want to have, to, I don't like that energy. I just don't. But I also don't like how that makes me feel, right? That if someone is exchanging money, like giving me money to support me, then I have to go above and beyond my capacity to please them. And uh, yeah, I just want people who are just like, girl, I love what you're doing. Here's some more money so that you can keep creating, so that we can keep enjoying what you're making. You know what I'm saying? I just want people to see the value in what I'm already doing as opposed to uh, like, oh, I have $5 or $7, girl. What's she going to do for the $7? You feel me? Like, I don't want it to feel like that. I just want it to feel like an open space where people can share community and we'll have meetups and stuff like that. Um, curated communities and curated conversations. I really want to have a conversation series where we all just sit and answer questions together, like journaling together, sharing our responses. And we had one this year. Um, and I thought that was pretty cool. But then a lot of other stuff happened. <laughs> Tragedy, sickness, all that good stuff. But yeah, I think I'm just going to lean into that and follow my intuition and follow that knowing that, girl, you don't like that. You don't like giving a little bit away and then trying to figure out, oh, what's for Patreon and what's for YouTube? And it's too much. It's too much dividing. It's too much energy split between two different places or three different places. And it's almost like I have to put a lot of energy into making myself marketable, right? Like, oh, please like me, please spend $7 with me, please. You know, like, 
no, I just want people, I want to put myself out there, let it exist, not have to fold myself in half or become someone I'm not. And I believe that the abundance is there because I've seen it already. Like I've literally seen it already with my patrons. Like my patrons who are there already are like, girl, you know, like low key, shout out to y'all. And I apologize, right? But I appreciate you because even when I put a poll up and said, what do you want to see from me? A lot of the people shows, I just want to support you. I just want you to keep being able to create. And I so appreciate that. And I think that's just the energy I'm in as an artist. Um, I have memberships. I'm developing a program. I have a program helping people reach their dreams and stuff like that. And that is like the work, right? But also my work is my art. And I just want people to support the art because they believe in it. And by supporting, they also get the extra goodies on top. I hope that makes sense. So my whole point is this row right here are all the things I'm going to put in my sunroom, which is now my Patreon. Um, so it's going to be like guided meditations. Let me just go over and go get it. So, so in my um, Patreon, you're going to get extra studio sessions, like behind the scene, the process, more stuff like this. Um, uh, you'll be able to see me create in real time, collaborative art. So I want to actually make art with my patrons. So having them answer questions every month and then based on those answers, making art for them, making music for them or uh, guided meditation for them or an affirmation or a love letter. Um, but also having them participate like, hey, do you want to be a part of this month's, you know, mini, what is it called? Mini documentary. You know what I mean? Like just these kind of ideas. They'll also get the first divs on all my projects. They'll get the demos of everything I create, see the stuff actually in real time. Um, so they'll still get that kind of stuff. Photo journals and reflections, photo projects, um, experimental things, all the things that I don't share on YouTube. Just stuff I want to try, stuff I want to do. Um, ambient nature sounds, music with uh, the nature sounds, and I have one for December. And it's with a loop called "I hope this I hope this world treats you kind." And so they leave, but kind. And um, sharing it with them that way. Soul conversations, just to connect with one another. Storytelling sessions, and some of this, and like guided meditations, love letters, and some of this kind of coincides with some of the activities in the garden, which is more hands-on, hands and I'll share more about that later at a different time. But I just want the Patreon page to feel like, I just wanna support what you're doing. I believe in your art, I wanna see it thrive. And a part of me has been really afraid to let it go because I'm like, no, I have to work hard for money. Like, that's my belief. I gotta work hard for money. I gotta grind myself into nothing. I have to prove that I am uh, worthy of money. You know what I mean? And people are just like, girl, I just want to help. <laughs> like literally shout out to y'all. Like I need to do a thank you video shouting out everyone that's ever given me anything because y'all have wowed me. Like people send me random cash apps and stuff like that. I'm like, just like, thanks for doing it. Hope this is encouraging. Hope this inspires you. Hope this is put to good use just because they want to see me thrive and they want to see me create. And so if I lean more, if I can, if I can put more energy into creating as opposed to selling myself, right? If I could put more energy into creating and being authentic and resonating with the people who are supposed to resonate with my stuff, then I feel like people get served, right? It also attracts people who just want to patronize me just because they want to, they want to, is it patronize? Whatever. Want to support me, support my journey, support my journey. Um, just because, right? Like, and so if I am being generous with my giving, just giving, 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 right? <laughs> Some people might call me a communist or whatever, right? This idea that um, I believe in generosity. I believe in giving. And if I'm giving, if I'm, if you support me being able to give freely and openly, please join my Patreon. You know what I mean? Like, if you want me to be able to keep creating art, to be able to keep loving people, keep inspiring people, and also be able to live, you know what I'm saying? Like to be able to pay a few bills, be able to pay for um, my email um, hosting platform where I send out love letters every other week or every month. If you want to help me support, support me by helping me pay for Zoom so that I can hold these conversations with people. If you want to help me, you know what I'm saying? Like these these things have costs to operate. And so my Patreon is not paying my bills, but it is allowing me to be able to use platforms and stuff like that to be able to um, create, you know, and be able to give and to be generous. And so literally they are lifesavers because I'm trying to tell you, if I didn't have my Patreon, we probably wouldn't have half the stuff. <laughs> we wouldn't. Um, I wouldn't be doing half the stuff. I wouldn't be able to bring 
the dreams in my heart to life because a lot of the dreams I have, it's not even around money. You feel me? Like, it's just that I need money to operate the things. Does that make sense? And so even if somebody were to give me a million dollars, that'd be wonderful, right? It, it alleviates the stress and I'm open to whatever money people want to give. But my focus is not money. My focus is on serving, but you need money to serve. I hope that makes sense. So if you want to help me serve, if you want to help me be generous, please join my Patreon. You'll also get, I just dropped a few things. Hold on. <laughs> You'll also get all this um, and more because I'm always creating something. My creativity is, is unending. So any ideas that I have, I'll share with you. You all get to vote on things. What do you think about this? How do you like this? Um, and if you want to support your girl, join. That's the kind of energy I want to have around my Patreon. It's just like, I'll probably do another video separate from this to flesh out, but I'm just thinking about this in real time. I don't want to be like, hey, please. You know what I mean? Like for $7, you get all of this. You know what I mean? I want it to be like, if you resonate with me, if you really want to support me and if you have it right to give, don't give if you don't have it. But if you have it to give and you want to see more people loved, inspired, impacted, um, fed, you know what I mean? Like, Help me be generous by being generous with me, you know, and not being ashamed to ask for help, not being ashamed uh, to say that, you know. So, yeah, that's that's where I am with that. OK, back to the Patreon thing. So now that I know that in mind, now that I have that at the top of my mind, I am going to trust it. <laughs> I'm going to lean into it. I'm not going to fight it like, girl, they're, I'm not going to think with scarce thoughts like, girl, no one's just going to give you money. That's not how that works. Because I'm not just asking just for people to give me money. I'm exchanging. I'm giving. My energy is an exchange of energy, right? And so money is an exchange of energy. And so if I'm giving energy, if I'm being generous, why? And it's, I'm speaking to myself, like dealing with my limited thinking, limited thoughts, or, you know, whatever. Limited mindset. It's like, why? If I am generous and I'm just giving freely, pouring into people, loving on people, helping people, why is it hard to believe that people want to be generous with me? Why do I feel like I'm unworthy of people being generous with me? Why do I believe that I got to struggle for everything I got? That nothing comes easy. I know I need water. That everything has to be hard, right? Everything has to be difficult. I have to prove my worth. And that's that's the real, that's really where, where it goes to. It's like, I have to prove my worth to prove that I'm, again, worthy, redundant but prove that I'm worthy of support prove that I'm worthy of finances like I feel like a lot of my money blocks has li less to do with the money that exists out there in the world and a lot to do with do I see myself worthy enough to receive receive it and if I did see myself as worthy to receive it I would ask for it more often right without shame without guilt without fear of people judging me or maybe you know even if I feel the fear of people judging me right like I still believe in my work and I still feel like I deserve to be supported because I support other people. You feel me? Like I buy other people's programs, music, content, whatever. And so, yeah, I deserve that energy back. You know what I'm saying? And everybody's not going to give and that's okay. Um, but the people that are out there, give them an opportunity to give. Show them how they can support you and allow them to make that choice. And I know that God is the ultimate source anyway. So either way, if I'm doing what God wants me to do, God will provide for me. That's it. If I'm doing what God wants me to do, God will provide for me because God has provided for me all this time. All this time. It might not be what I want for myself and want for my life, but at the end of the day, I am provided for. I'm good. I'm in a house with heat, right? Like, I have the privilege of planning and dreaming about my life. I'm loving people and that feels good. I'm inspiring people and that feels awesome. Um, all that to say. I'm generous and so I deserve generosity back. And that's something I have to teach myself. I am worthy. I don't have to work hard for it. I don't have to strain for it. What is mine will be mine. All the things that I say to other people, I need to take my own advice and just be open to receiving and allow people the opportunity to give if they want to give. So that's what I want the energy around my Patreon to be. This is built so that I can keep creating, keep loving people, keep inspiring people. The programs and stuff, that's something separate, right? But this is this is for people who want to support my mission. So yeah, just gonna go with that energy and not ask for permission and just go with it because abundance is unending. God is the ultimate source and God has all of the sources, right? These are just, Patreon is just a resource. Money is just a resource, you feel me? But God is the ultimate source. So 
I'm asking. I'm going to make a bold move right now in all my fear and anxiety. If you have it, please support me because I could really use your help. There's no shame if you can't do it. I'm not judging you if you can't. I'm not even going to be mad. I get it. Times are hard. But if you want to support me, your girl, in creating more art and helping more people and loving more people, I just want to love people for a living, join my Patreon. Yay. All right. Back to uh, dreaming. Also, one more thing to add. By creating more work for myself on the Patreon side, I'm unable to, like, I'm spread thin. I'm exhausted. And I have to mind my energy, honor it, right? Like, I don't have a lot of energy. <laughs> like, you know, top of the day to, like, mid-afternoon, that's it for me. So trying to do all this and all that and my podcasts and make music. You know what I'm saying? And just be human and be a wife and a daughter and a friend and be a person, right? Like it's, that's exhausting. And I think that because we live in a world where we're so used to people being exploited, we see people exploiting themselves and we don't think twice about it. But like that comes at a cost. Like work isn't done in the world because we're exploiting ourselves or overworking ourselves, right? Like, and so I don't want to be an overworked person. I want to be a present person. And if I'm present, I can create more art. I can be healthy. Um, I can thrive and I think that I deserve to thrive right like so why am I like I think I think we frown so much on people who ask for help I think that's what the fear I'm feeling is like it's it's like oh if I ask for help then you know then I'm weak then I failed or I should be able to get it out the mud and you know and I don't believe in none of that anyway pulling yourself up by your own bootstraps is not real it's fake so like why am I subjecting myself to that same harshness that I don't believe in for nobody else I believe in people being generous. I believe in being generous for other people. And so if I give that energy, then I'm going to get that energy back and everything is going to be okay. Everything is going to be okay, you know? And understanding that wealth, resources, opportunities don't just come the ways in the ways that I can think of, but God has multiple ways that it could happen. And by putting myself out there and just being obedient, I feel like I'm in alignment with abundance you know what I mean? Like scarcity just kind of falls off and opportunities pop up, people pop up. Again, I, I had my song in a commercial. I did nothing but play. I put my song on YouTube and somebody saw it and said, I like that. Let's put it in a commercial. And I, and I just want to be in that same flow, not forcing nothing, not being afraid of it, not working out, not even being tied to the outcome of something, right? But just, but just being in place. And the, the only thing that I can control and focus on is, am I in place? Am I doing the thing that I'm supposed to do? And if that is, then that's enough and I will be provided for. If I'm being obedient, I will be provided for. If I'm in alignment, I will be provided for, you know? So just an extra thought, but okay. Thank you for listening. <laughs>
I'm setting up my business to, to support the life that I want to live, not the other way around. I'm, I'm putting my business together from the energy that I want to feel every single day. And I can honestly say I feel really good about it. There are some things that I'm kind of like, ah, we'll see. But I'm not like stuck to like, oh, it has to work. It's just like an extra, you know, an extra offering that if it doesn't feel good, I'll just cut it off because I don't want to carry anything heavy into 2023. I don't want to do anything I don't want to do. I don't think that I have to suffer in order to make money. So um, I've mapped out the garden. I've mapped out my offerings, like my art, my photography, my books, all those things, YouTube. I've mapped out um, and Patreon, which is now called The Sunroom. And Get Unstuck, Get Started, which is my program where I help people take their ideas to doing. So I'm really excited about these things. Um, but it's time to get to work. I need to, after I eat lunch and rest, maybe take a couple of days just to be, just do something else to not be so focused on money and business, I'm gonna come back and actually put together the action plans. Like, okay, girl, dreaming is great, but actions are better. Doing the thing and setting the intention and saying, okay, God, I'm, I'm serious, okay? I'm serious. I'm, I'm yielding all the stuff that doesn't feel good, all the stuff that feels heavy and laborious and out of alignment and opting into all the things that feel good and uh, on assignment, you know? So that's it for now. Um, yeah, I still have some posts up there. That's for something else. I'm going to do like a five day email challenge of just like helping people be kind to themselves. So I'm excited about that. Can't wait to share that with you. But I'm really excited. I feel clear, feel good and lifted and like, okay, I know what I'm doing. I can't say, I don't know what I'm doing. What do I do next? Oh, where am I? Who am I? What year is this? <laughs> like, no, I have, I have a vision. I have a goal. I have intentions and that feels good to have. So yeah, I hope that you enjoyed this behind the scenes. If you want to see more of this, let me know. Um, but I just wanted to chronicle and show you how I map, up, map out everything in 2023. And we'll see how 2023 goes. We'll see how 2023 goes. And then we'll come back. And uh, and we'll probably adjust mid-year too, like every quarter to see like, did that work? You know, but I'm just holding everything with an open hand. I'm not holding on to it like it has to work. I'm like, you know what? Let's see what happens. You know? Worst comes to worst, we just shut it all down and start all over again. And starting over is actually kind of fun. <laughs> so, but it's the action that it takes the energy for. So that's what I need to preserve and conserve. Um, and right now it's time to eat lunch and rest. So I love you, bye. Okay, and welcome back. We are back. It has been weeks since I, about two weeks, nothing crazy, but two weeks since I completed my brainstorming session the post-its are still up there and I still have some more to do, but I have the skeleton of my business together and I really want to give you all an insight to like my business models. So I am a healing artist. I am a creative facilitator um, and some people would use the word coach and things like that. So yeah, so I am, I help black women follow their dreams and to love themselves. And so no matter what I'm doing, whether creating a song or a program um, or helping women create a creative business themselves, like this is my jam. Like my focus is on loving people and also teaching people to love themselves, to love others, right? And to follow their dreams, to do the things. Um, and so, yes, so I have different, so that is the umbrella goal for everything I do, right? Um, but I have different versions of businesses. So the first one is just artistry. I am an artist, I sing. I write, um, I take photographs, I do a lot of things. I experiment, um, I create in real time, I create for people. And so that first category of business is just art. So it's me creating albums, magazines, books, um, tangibles, but also things that you can purchase online. So like downloaded songs, that kind of stuff. So that's my first category of money making. And so I've been doing that the longest, I believe. Yeah, I've been doing that the longest, whether that's putting out a single or an album, um, excuse me, or books, like I said, excuse me. The first book I put out, I think, was in 2015 or 16. Um, mostly poetry and prose. Um, Matter is another book that I have. Hold on one second. I think I have a copy here. All right, so actually I have a couple of books with me. So this is a book I wrote about helping people writing songs. It's 31 prompts and exercises to help you write a good song. And this came out with my EP called Matter. And so this is kind of like a book that went along with the project, the same themes. And so inside I have poetry, prose, and photography. Can't really see it. 
So yeah. So um, these are like, you know, things that you can actually have, that you can actually purchase from me. Um, and so yeah, so that's my first big thing. My first big thing are books, music, things like that, things I create, right? And so then the other section, so that's, that's not new. This is just something I'm focusing more on and I wanna create more time to be an artist, which is why I'm creating the other business models to support that dream of being an artist. And so along with being a creative or creator, I create more than just music and writing and photography and things, um, live streams, all that good stuff. I create content as well. So I create videos, um, podcasts. I have a podcast called The Love Letter Project, which is just like an audio version of what I already do on YouTube, but also some extra stuff. I had a podcast, I still have a podcast called Black Girl Creative. I'm still trying to figure out what I want to do with that. Um, I had a podcast called Black Girls Make Music. Uh, yeah, I had a lot of things. The Free Black Woman was a podcast that I have and I've revamped that to Love Black Women, which just conversations with black women about different things. So, so I have that content, so that's another bucket. The other bucket I have um, is what I'm actually creating in real time now. This is called The Garden. I kind of mentioned it before, previously, but The Garden is a place where people can come and work with me, right? Whether it be one-on-one -on -one or in group settings, where we really um, plant seeds that we want like to grow in our lives. So if you want more peace or more calm, um, more love, more self-love, more reflection, just time away to really consider things, to grow things in your life, to build community with other people. Um, every month we're gonna have a theme, walking through different themes. <laughs> so the first, uh, for January, what I know I have so far is like, you're here, like being here, being present, right? Um, because I know a lot of people have like New Year resolutions and I don't wanna get ahead of myself, but people have New Year resolutions and a lot of them are doing their New Year resolutions out of lack instead of love and excitement and fun. Um, so helping people to be present is gonna be the focus for the first month, the focus on loving yourself, loving your life, that kind of stuff, and not in a cheesy way, but in a real way, like grounding yourself with gratitude. So that's like gonna be the first month. But within that month, we're gonna meet a total of seven times, I believe. And so some of those will be co-creation, you know, sessions where we meet together, we make something, we do a chore that we've been putting off, we pay bills, whatever it is that you've been avoiding, you do it in a community setting because it just feels better to not have to do that by yourself, right? And then um, other sessions are gonna be like workshops, um, storytelling sessions, which, are, which I'm really excited about. But I'm also, so this is gonna be a support to the Black Girl Creative. So while I'm all about black women following their dreams, I want them to follow their dreams from a place of love, abundance, right? Gratitude, all these different things. So yeah, so that's gonna be in the garden. The garden is its own thing. It's more like a, like a group program, like a membership where people can um, join whatever sessions they can. Again, there's seven sessions to join um, where people can come together and we can grow together, okay? And then the other, excuse me, I dropped something. The other thing that I have is the sunroom, which is my Patreon. And as I mentioned before, I'm turning my Patreon from another platform to create for to a place where people can support me in the work that I'm doing as an artist. So I love creating when I'm making love songs for people, encouraging affirmational songs and stuff like that. Um, but I'm gonna be honest, that's not what's marketable right now. Maybe it'll change in the future. I feel like there's like a trend or an upswing going towards like affirmational music. But for the most part, like the artists that are out here selling are selling low-key chaos, right? Like selling interesting things. And it's just not my brand. It's not that it's better or it's different. I mean, excuse me, it's not that it's better or worse. It's just different. It's just not my thing. And so for people who want me to keep doing the work that I'm doing and also being able to be generous and holding free workshops and stuff like that for other people, I want to invite them to come to my Patreon so that they can support me so that I can keep doing the work that I want to do in the world. So that's the point. So like I said, I have my artistry, I have my The Garden, I have The Sun Room, which is my Patreon, um, and I have content creation. So those are four streams, right? And again, shout out to Stephanie Perry, talking about, she had a video talking about um, having streams of income coming from one river. My river is loving people, right? My, my river honestly is my artistry. I feel like that is my thing. Like. This is like, it's a low barrier, you know, for people to enter, like all these different things. And if they want to work more with me, right, or benefit more, 
from what I create, then you can join the garden or the sunroom. Because even in the sunroom, even though it's more about like supporting the work I'm already doing, they still get to come in and come to our storytelling sessions, for example, or um, having sunroom sessions, which I'm really excited about. I'm gonna have one on YouTube and one behind the scenes that goes a little deeper. But this idea of just like spreading love, all I wanna do is spread love. So whether that's making music and sharing music on the fly, creating in real time, affirming and encouraging other people, that's what I'm really looking forward to. You know, so that's my model. And now I'm going to show you the schedule, the sign for schedule, the schedule for um, my work. So I want to work, work Tuesdays. You can't see it. Tuesdays, Wednesdays and Thursdays. Mondays, I go live on YouTube. I'm going to go back to that um, or not or just resting. <laughs> um, Sundays is my Sabbath day. Saturday is reserved for family, friends, that kind of stuff. And Friday and Thursday, I just want to rest, right? So Thursday is one of my work weeks, but I'm alternating. So if I have one week where I work on Tuesday, the next week I'm not working Tuesday, I'm working Thursday. So that I have some time during the week to feel like my time is mine. Like I'm not creating a business just to be overworked again, right? Like I'm not trying to be the boss that I had before who was overworking me or uncaring or not leaving room for me to be human, right? I don't want to work all day long. I don't want to work all week long. And so if I can create a living for myself that doesn't require me to overextend and overreach, um, then I'd be winning. <laughs> I'd be winning. If I can get four rest days, you know, give or take, four rest days out of the week, beautiful, beautiful. So that way I can actually spend time meditating or not doing anything or resting or creating that's the whole point, right? Like I don't wanna overwork myself and give so much to these businesses that I'm not creating the work that I wanna see in the world, the art that I wanna see in the world, the music, the writing, the books, the photography, the projects, all these different things. I also wanna be able to give to people, you know what I mean? And I'm able to give people out of the abundance of what I already have. And if I'm creating my business where I'm not, uh, not just giving, what's the word? Not just giving money or resources, but also time and energy, right? Because it takes time and energy to prep for these things, for these sessions. Um, the get unstuck, get started. I forgot all about that. Let's talk about that too. So the get unstuck, stuck and get started is a program that I put together. I launched it this year and I'm going to relaunch it in February where I help black women take their dreams to doing, like take them from dreaming to doing. So we flesh out the work. We do the inner work. We come up with a strategy, a plan. Um, and this time I'm doing it a little differently. Last time we met twice a week. This time I'm taking the advice from other people. So it was kind of like we would meet twice a week and we would do the work together in real time, like the prompts and following along together. I think what I want to do this year or this time around is give the pre-recorded information so that people can do the work on their own. Or, you know, if they, have, if they don't have time, they can do it when we show up. But also during the time we meet together during the week, we can actually work through it together. If anybody has any questions or if anybody wants to share anything, because I feel like our sessions were so good that they went on for so long. And it's not, it's not in a bad way, but it just was so juicy, it was so good. And I wanna make sure that most of the time it's not just me talking, but a sharing, you know what I mean? And supporting one another and offering ideas and encouragement and inspiration. Um, so that's gonna launch in February. So I'm also keeping that in mind. So I have, let's go back, my artistry. Get Unstuck, Get Started, um, The Garden, and The Sunroom. And The Sunroom, of course, is just supporting the art. So it's kind of kind of these two together. But either way, four different streams from one river, you know? And so again, the Get Unstuck and Get Started does go under the Black Girl Creative brand, which is my Black woman creativity brand, which I'm trying to, you know, help Black women love themselves, heal through their creativity but also heal before they create or heal while, they, heal, heal while they're creating so that they can, can create a life, I can't speak, they can create a life um, that you're not trying to fill holes, right? You're not trying to become famous just because you want attention. Like, no, we're, we're, gonna, do, we're gonna deal with the heart work too so that whatever we do is gonna be done in love and even love for ourselves. So that is the, I think that's everything. <laughs> um, of course, it'll look better if I had like an actual grade. But what I have here is just pencil and you can't really see it. But either way, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays are gonna be my work days, the middle of the week. And then, um, and that's gonna be in the evening time. 
uh, and I've also been thinking about that. Like I want to have sessions during the middle of the day too, just because some people don't, you know, work certain hours. And I'm thinking about people, if people join from California, then that's going to be 3.30 for them instead of 6.30. It's a whole thing. That's for later. That's, that's something to figure out later. Right now I have the skeleton and the idea behind what I want to do. And I shouldn't let those logistics stop me from actually doing what I need to do, right? So we're going to take things one step at a time. See if anybody even shows up. Anybody signs up, right? Like that's that's the goal. Like we're going to move from what we have. And right now I don't have anybody. I have people on a wait list for the garden, which I'm really excited about to share with them. And now I'm also thinking about pricing. Let's talk about pricing. <sighs> Charging for things is hard for me because one, I don't want people to think I'm a scammer. But also I want to make sure that I'm giving people their value for their dollar. And what I've also realized is, again, for myself, I've said this before, is that I'm always overworking. I do way more than what's necessary to qualify me to get paid for something. And that has to do with my own mindset. Um, and so I want to be compensated for the energy, time, resources um, that I give. And I've been seeing people with memberships. Let's talk figures, right? At first, I was thinking $47 a month, right? And... With that math, I'm trying to figure out how much do I need to live, right? Like with this business, how much do I need to live? And I'm not taking into consideration all the other things because, you know, okay, I am considering those other things because those are other streams, but I'm building one at a time. You feel me? And so I want to make sure that I'm giving my all to those things as I can. Um, of course, with artistry and stuff like that, the prices of an album, what, seven, ten dollars But I'm actually looking to release a project in the spring that's going to be music, books, and merch all together so people can purchase bundles if they want to um, so that I can actually make more money and spread the message. And I also want to go on tour, so that's going to be a whole other thing. Um, so, yeah, so these are just ideas. I don't have a budget because I don't know, right? I don't know what's going to happen. This is my first time doing half of the stuff. And so I don't really have an expectation except to learn, to figure out along the way. But I know for the garden membership, because we're going to be meeting seven times a month for multiple hours each meeting, right? Like I want to be sure that I'm being compensated well. So I'm actually stuck between $47 and like 97 when we just rounded up 50 or $100 a month. And at first I was like, I don't know, that might be too much. But it's like, no, like <laughs> you're giving a lot of value. And there are other people who I respect the work that they're doing who I pay that. You know, you know what I'm saying? Or around that price. And I was like, well, maybe I can come to a middle, maybe do like 77 a month. Um, that feels kind of good. Like I want to pick a price that feels good, but also stretches my beliefs a little bit, right? So I'm thinking about you know, the life I want to live, what I want to be able to afford. Um, I want to be able to give to people without being worn out or exhausted. I want to be able to give to other people, right? Like I want to be able uh, to be generous. And so I know that my offerings, I'm going to be generous. I'm going to be there 125%. I know that, you feel me? And so, but I also know that burnout comes because you're not well supported. And this is a conversation that I'll probably revisit a different time but a lot of your favorite artists and creators are exhausted because they're not being supported like they really need to be supported to do the work that they really want to do. You know, we live in a capitalistic society. It sucks, but it, it's it's the reality. And a lot of people want great art from their people without ha without supporting the people. You know what I mean? And I'm, of course, I'm talking about people who can do it because not everybody can. But it's like, you know, in order to keep this thing go going and be lubricated and to have a little wiggle room, right, some margin you might need to up them prices. And I think I'm just meeting my ceiling in my head, like this idea of like, oh God, what can I charge that's, that doesn't feel slimy? And, and it's like, why does it feel slimy? It's a judgment on myself because I'm not slimy <laughs> and nothing I'm offering is slimy. Um, this is a low key, like, and I heard someone else say this, like what I'm offering is not life and death and that's the benefit, right? I'm not offering something that's life and death, like housing or food or, I mean, even sometimes with food, depending on what you're eating, right? Um, the different kinds of food, dishes and stuff like that. Food is necessary. Food should not be as expensive as it is. But what I'm offering is a luxury, is a luxury service. And so because it's a luxury service, I don't, I shouldn't be like, oh, well, I don't want to charge too much because I want people to get what they need. Because the thing is, I give a lot for free. Every YouTube video, podcast, um, you know, 
live stream, everything, all of that is free. Free. Of course, it costs me something and it costs other people something to come and spend their time, but it's free. And so I've been giving free things for years now and it's time to actually charge <laughs> for something, you know? Uh, it's not easy to do, um, but I know that it needs to happen. And so I think I'm gonna settle on 77 for the garden. Uh, for the get unstuck and get started, I'm still working out that price. I'm thinking 147, just because we meet regularly every week for 12 weeks constantly. And I'm really like hand-holding people through the process. We're hand-holding each other, you know what I mean? So I was thinking 147 as an intro price and then maybe doubling it next year. Um, or next go round, because the first time I charged forty seven dollars. This time I'm charging one forty seven. Um, and I'm thinking about having a price for people who, no, I'm just gonna charge one forty seven. <laughs> um, I was thinking about doing it. Somebody mentioned, hey, maybe you can have like a pre recorded version where people can pay less, and a meet in person version where people pay more, which is a good idea and I think I, I think I still might do that you know people want to just buy the course and not worry about meeting up um, but I really feel like a lot of the good work is done meeting up like I want people to come and be a part and share um, and actually as I'm recording this tonight uh, which is the 21st of December we're having a meetup with the people who went through the get unstuck and get started last time so I'm gonna you know see what they think about it and and that kind of thing but yeah so I think that's it Got down to scheduling. Well, first of all, got down to the river, the overarching thing, the streams of income, um, my schedule so far, and pricing. And I think I just need to stick with it and adjust as necessary. You know, we can overanalyze and overthink and go back to the drawing board and come, come again and, you know, but I'm trying to follow my intuition, lean into my knowing, and then also leaving room for making mistakes. Everything doesn't have to be perfect. I might make the wrong choice. I might undercharge or overcharge. And the people will let me know. <laughs> and then based on the reaction, we'll determine, oh, I need to change some things. You know what I mean? But to not move because you don't have the answers, it's just procrastination. It's just you lying to yourself saying you have to have all the answers in place before. It's fear. It's fear of making the wrong decision. decision. But instead of being afraid of making the wrong decision, just make a decision so that you can pick the right thing to do after that. You know what I mean? Viola Davis was on Hot Wings or Hot Ones, Hot Takes or something like that, whatever the show is where they eat the wings. And she said something that really stuck out to me. I'm paraphrasing, of course, but she says, if you don't know which direction to go, just go in a direction. Just go. Just run towards it. Don't be afraid of making the wrong decision or going the wrong way. And I love that because even in my own mind, what I've said to myself before is I'm open to God adjusting me as he needs to adjust me. I don't need to have everything figured out right now. I don't need to know what the outcome of this year is going to be because that's not the point. My job is to show up in the best way that I can with what I have now, with what I know now, and give to people, serve people, right? That's the whole point. I'm just serving them and figuring out later what to do. And I think that stops a lot of people from starting because I feel like they have to have all the answers first. And that's not true. And that's not how a lot of successful people do anything. A lot of successful people don't know what they're doing. I don't think anybody knows what they're doing until they're doing it, until they figure it out. Oh, this is what I should do. And so you should give yourself the same grace. And that's what I'm giving myself. So that's the update. That is the whole thing. Um, I'll probably do a quarter check in in March to let you know how everything is going uh, with my creative businesses. <laughs> um, and yeah, I'm excited. I'm really excited about what this year is going to bring. I have a lot of dreams for 2023, hopefully. Some of them come true or better ones happen um, or better ones are realized, I should say. But I'm just kind of walking into the year with open hands and like, I mean, this is the idea that I have, but I'm okay with God taking it and putting something else there better, you know? So, uh, they say Rome wasn't built in a day. I don't even like using that phrase, but things take time. Things take time. It takes resor research, which is really just getting in the mud and doing it. You know what I mean? Like you can Google stuff to death. But you won't, won't really know what's going to happen until you do it. So just do it, you know? All right. That's all I got. Hopefully this is helpful. <laughs> um, hopefully this is helpful. And I'll be back in March to let you know how everything goes. All right.